the flat land like a man on the run Riding down Highway 61 the Sides of the roads all lined with fields Nothing but sunset in the windshield Feel it as soon as I ride into town this is where I go to slow down Miles and miles of soybeans and corn I'm in the place where the blues was born What's up guys? We're back here at the Crappie Expo, sitting to my next friend, Jerry Hancock <laughs> here from Texas. The champ. Yeah, the champ, man. It's hard to believe. I think I'm, ex I'm excited. Just <laughs> I know, I'm excited. I don't know, because we, we ran into Jerry last year in Oklahoma yep. at the show there, and it's just, it's really heartwarming for me to get to know the guy. We sit down with him, and you see him up on the screen going and waving, and it's just knowing that I made a friend in a whole other state, and he's up, and I'm just rooting for Jerry. And he crashed it. Oh yeah, me and Jerry, we, we communicate throughout yep. the year, and, and you know that's the thing about this crappie fishing sport. You got so many buddies. Yep. No matter yeah. what you're doing, you got buddies. I follow you guys. You know, I follow Brad's guide service over there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then the crappie connection. Y'all do so many cool things. Yeah, I mean them, them deals with the biologists. Y'all been yeah. doing. We share it in Texas, and really? people are watching yeah. and. You know, it, you know it's, Texas is our number one uh, view count right now, I yeah. believe. So Man, we need to go down there and do a show. We, Absolutely. We look forward. I look forward to every interview y'all do. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of the – man when's a new one coming yeah, you know? awesome. so and i enjoyed the one last year you know sat down with you guys get to meet you guys because yeah i knew y'all before y'all didn't know me you yeah. know and uh it was really neat I, I was glad to meet you and i consider you guys friends Absolutely. It, man, you know it. it's like like brad said you know it's even though there's competition and stuff in this we're all oh, we're yeah. all brothers oh yeah right? yeah it, it's definitely. awesome <clears throat> after jerry won yesterday i was walking somewhere <laughs> and all of a sudden jerry brad and i mean it was just like Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it was I, just awesome. I, I was trying not to break down on the stage. Oh, yeah. I would have broke down and just man, I, oh, I thought yeah. about, luckily, we had long enough to kind of go through that backstage. Yep. And yep. for some reason, I woke up, I thought it would be a nervous wreck. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I wanted to wake up in second. Mm -hmm. It was, was pretty, it's kind of ironic. Two weeks ago, me and Paul won a state championship in Texas. Going into day two, we were 0. .79 behind. Mm -hmm. And we come back and won. Mm. Going into yesterday, we were 0.79 behind. Oh, really? It Man, was, that is crazy. and it took the pressure off of us. We're gonna go fish. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do what we can do. The pressure was on Jeff. He was leading. Mm -hmm. And I can that's that. kind of how we felt. I've been leading the classic after day one, and I couldn't sleep. And we bombed the second day. We our nerves. I don't. It wasn't just that when we didn't catch our fish. And I think that would be my my <clears throat> mentality as well because. I get a lot of, if you, especially when you put underneath pressure like that and you just get the anxiety, it, it works you over if you let it. You know, we, I said this on the stage, you can't win a tournament on the first day, but you can lose it. You got that right. We had 783 yeah. the first day. The fish were there. We couldn't get them to bite. But we were sitting in 20th place after the first day of this tournament. I told Paul, I said, we talked. I said, look, them fish are there. If they bite, we can catch 10 pounds or better seen them the guys ahead of us not all of them are going to do as good as they did today some guys behind us are going to do better i said mm -hmm. we can make a jump tomorrow maybe to the top 10 get closer and then on the third day make another jump didn't know we could win it from 20th but we could get up we yeah. want to make top five or something you know yeah. and to go from 20th to second with that 1066 bag biggest stringer the whole tournament and we knew yesterday there was more of those fish in that area mm -hmm. If we go do what we did, then I know Jeff was going to have to catch almost a 10-pound bag again. Puts the pressure on him. Right. And uh, 
we had 9.30 yesterday. We didn't catch as many big fish. We didn't see as many, but we caught enough. Yeah. You know, we had still had the biggest bag mm -hmm. of the day. Uh, we we thought we had a chance at second when mm -hmm. we got to the, we, we felt the whole time we we need one or two more bites, one or two more. And that's the mentality that we keep on the water. One more bite, one more, one more bite. bite. Yeah. And when you get him, what's our smallest fish? You know, 116. All right, let's call him. Right. right. You know, that's what we did. And um, we went out and did what we do. You know, let's talk about that. Let's, let's start out the beginning of this week pre-fishing because oh, a man. lot of guys look at a lake like this. This and I want, you, like I want you to take your time and, and tell yeah. us, no matter what the time limit is, I want, to, yeah. I want you to take your time when you got here until right now. Man, you know, when they announced it, we weren't happy. Mm -hmm. uh, weren't excited. Table Rock, not known as crappie. We know it's deep and clear. Right. It's not what we're used to. Right. We found that at Hamilton last year. I didn't right. catch a fish at yeah. Hamilton. Trying to do fish against my strengths, but there was nothing on that lake. Mm -hmm. that you're talking I could, about your strengths. You're talking about your style of fishing. My style of fishing, which is vertical fishing, timber. Well, I can fish brush piles. I can shoot docks. I can do it all. But my strength is live scoping. Now with live scope. Before we we done it without live scope. Right. But live scoping, standing timber, one pole. You know, vertical mm -hmm. fishing. We heard there was timber in this lake. So well, if there's timber, we need to find it. The first day on the water, Sunday. We caught two fish. Caught one at nine o'clock on a dock, and we didn't catch our next fish to two forty-five. And that's tough. That and tough. we 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 stayed around the mouth of the James River, and uh, told Paul said we've got to go further up that river. Uh, we wanted to catch fish closer to the weigh-in. Right. Just more we, time, the fish, everything. But we know we do it on every lake. We're going to try to get as far away from the dam as we can get and stay in deep enough water to catch fish. That's mm -hmm. our motto, what we've lived by from tournament mm -hmm. fishing all over. So second day, which we had terrible weather. Mm -hmm. I mean, that rain. Mm -hmm. We made a 20-mile run the first day. Second day, we said, we're not making that run. We drove up there and unloaded. And we went further up the river and messed around we didn't get to fish a lot because the weather was so mad we were freezing yeah it, it just them first and then uh so tuesday was kind of a wash we really didn't accomplish anything we narrowed we we eliminated a little bit more water we got up to the area where we thought we needed to be but we didn't find much uh we caught seven or eight fish just fish no good so uh wednesday morning it was raining mm -hmm. we woke up 5 30 i walked outside i went back to bed we messed around. We drove up to Cape Fair and put in. It was 11 o'clock when we hit the water. We said, we've got to figure something out yeah. in the next few hours. Right. And uh, we got up, and we kind of we found a little pattern then. We, were, we found bluffs had some deep timber, 30, 40-foot water. And at the end of that bluff where it made a bend, mm -hmm. if there was any timber on that bend, we caught better fish on that last 50 to 75 yards of that bluff. You're talking mm -hmm. about like how, how big of a bend was it? Like a 90, Just, 45? Yeah, where that, where that creek, that river run up there and when it turned and went the other way. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you can look and see the bluffs here, bluffs on, you know, the, you can look and see where the creek, and then you see the flat side. Mm -hmm. Where that creek made that bend, or say the river, I call it a creek, river, it, that timber along that bend, and if there was a flat, we actually found one that had a flat in about 25 to 35 foot water. Had a bunch of trees on it. It had mm -hmm. some bushy trees. Mm -hmm. It had some good fish on it. Talk a little bit closer to the mic, Phil. Okay, and uh, so we, we found that spot. Then we run on up and we found another bluff, and it was more sheer drop off bluff. And it had some 40, 42 foot water. We made a, about a 50 yard run up through it and, and caught a. I think a 140, 150 on mm -hmm. it, and caught, seen a bunch more fish. So we said, all right, we got two good spots. Then we found a um, uh, a little pocket that was between two bluffs, and it had some timber in it, and Paul caught about a 150 on it, on that. So we said, hey, we got three spots we're pretty confident in, and a couple more spots. And uh, you know, what tackle what was you using at the time? Man, when we come, I put six pound mono, clear line, light line. Paul did too. I had some casting stuff. We were casting, so doing pitching up for clear water. I was, and and we couldn't make anything happen doing that. I said, well, we need to go find some muddier water. And once we got on that muddier water, those fish weren't spooking on us. They were mm -hmm. 22. The, we figured this out. You look at a tree, you'd see a water fish at the top. They were bass, mm -hmm. little crappie, and perch and stuff like that. 
But if you got down there about 22 to 30 foot, you'd see a fish here and there. Them big fish was down there, 22, 30 foot deep. Wow. So what we was trying to do is just get our bait past all those little fish down to those bigger fish. And um, we did the same thing I do at Lake Fork. Mm -hmm. One, it worked to our advantage. When we went in that night, I said, I'm ripping the six off. Yep. I put 20 pound yep. canine back on. Uh, braid a braided braid. line uh went back i was using a 10 foot the new lose pro target uh rod we went back to vertical vertical how fishing. big a jig did you put back on eighth ounce i was using uh i used the uh eighth ounce slab daddy uh mr mr crappie jigs various colors paul has a hair tie he has a guy in texas david pauling make for him paul only uses a black shirt and a white mm -hmm. that's only two jigs that guy oh, yeah, yeah. he used his normal jig do you put uh, a weight above that jig i or? put an eighth ounce bullet weight uh -huh. with that braid i take a bullet weight i run it through there twice so it'll still slide if i want to right and you know because sometimes i'm using 16th or 32nd ounce jigs and when it falls it falls backwards right it'll tangle up mm -hmm. you know i like that bullet because when i flip it that cone on it that, mm -hmm. that line that seems water. to slide down that better i don't tangle up as much mm -hmm. So, and I use that weight naturally to help get it down there and to see it on live scope. It mm -hmm. gives me a reference point because I can sometimes drop it in somewhere. I don't see my jig, but I can see my weight. Mm. And that weight will move sideways or I know where my jig is because I see my weight. Right. I, you know, that's what I do guiding. Um, we needed more weight to get that jig down there faster. Uh, it took forever, but I found that these fish, were they were hitting it and running sideways with it a lot. With that heavier weight, we were missing a lot more fish because we couldn't see it or, or couldn't feel it. Mm -hmm. So I reluctantly stuck with that eighth and eight combo. Um, I had a better hookup rate with that. And uh, that's what Paul, he Paul uses a 10 pound strand mono mm -hmm. and uh, he was using an eighth ounce split shot above an eighth ounce jig, basically the same thing. I was using a 10 foot rod, he's standing behind me. I'm running the boat, he's using a 12. Mm -hmm. So we're both fishing the same distance right. away from the right. boat. And that's what we did with just live scoping down through there, and we're looking for fish 20 to 30 foot deep. And some of them you could tell were bigger. Some of them you couldn't tell were bigger. Uh, they just, you could see there was fish down there. Yeah. And we, you know, uh, the day we caught the 1066, we probably caught 40 keepers and, and weeded through them. Yesterday we caught about 25 keepers, and actually our weight went down some, you know. It still was a numbers deal. If, I figure if we catch 40 or 50 fish, mm -hmm. we're going to have better seven out of those than we are if we only catch 10 or 20. Right. Yeah. So it was a numbers game because we couldn't really target all those fish, you yep. know, the big fish. Mm -hmm. But we did see some big fish that, hey, the biggest fish we caught yesterday, 168, I think, on our scales. I seen a tree. I seen the fish about 40 foot out. When I got up there, the way the tree was, I seen the fish. I marked he was 28 foot deep. When I got up there, I could not see the fish at 20, when I got up close enough to drop on him, but I knew he's 28 foot. So I dropped my jig down to 28 foot and I drug it over behind that tree and that fish sat down on it. I never saw him bite, but I, mm -hmm. I seen him, you, you seen know, the distance. Where he was before I knew him. where he was and he bit it. And that, that was, as soon as I stuck it, I told Paul, this, this is a big fish. And uh, you're having to reel up with that deep. Real slow. Mm -hmm. we, we, our big concern was losing fish exactly. in this field. Exactly. That, I'll just mm -hmm. run it down real quick. Go we, ahead and tell us. We lost one fish in three days, a 134 the second day, that we had to weigh a 125 in this place. So that actually, yep. that 1066 could have been 1070 something. Right. Um, and I don't know why that fish died. We, we treated him the same way all of them. We had two deep hook fish the first day. I cut the jig on one, didn't take it out till we got to the scales. That fish lived, you know, and Paul had one blood running down it that was a 154, and it fish lived. What do you do? You, you what know, do you do when it happens? Throw them in there and hope they live. You we didn't. We didn't fizz anything. We never do, and we don't. We don't put any. But you took your time reeling it up. We right? reel them up slow. Did you have an issue with getting them tangled up as through all them trees? No, no, we didn't. We kind of pulled them away from the tree, and I try try to get them out of the timber if right. they were fixed up. Get them out. And then they would run around. They, they fought pretty hard. I mean, I was mm -hmm. pretty impressed. Some of these fish fooled you a little what bit. Kind of time, what kind of time frame did you let them fish fight you? As you, um, as you, just, as you from 28 foot, right? Just, yep, 28, 30 foot. Just reeling it steady, keeping a lot of pressure on them, but not no holding them up. No slack. No slack. And 30 you, seconds or less? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it don't take that long. But, you know, you're not burning them right, up. Right, right. Because we didn't practice some, and eyes bugged out. Mm -hmm. You could see. Right. We we were worried about losing fish, but we never did. And and 
Well, tournament fishing, same thing. Like in July, we won one on Texas home. The water's 91 degrees. We put 20 pounds, Paul, we run, we carry a 110 quart cooler with two aerators on it. We put 20 pounds of ice in there, put lake water, cool that. That's all we do. We never add anything. We never fizz them. We don't put the, I don't, the only time I ever used the weights to hold on the bottom, it killed the fish. I just let them float. If they want to float upside down or on their side, I don't care. I mean, we let them float. Do you fill it all the way up full of water? Huh? Do you feel that cooler? Pretty complete? close. Three yeah. quarters of the way. Yeah. I've, I've heard Matter that's of fact, yesterday, the camera boat was there. and we Because we, we had a marshal, and we had a camera boat with us from like 9 o'clock to 11.30. And we were mic'd up. Paul goes back there. Up, our biggest fish, 168, he opens that cooler. That fish jumped out. And oh, on the wow. deck started flopping. Shit. He, had, he said a curse word on camera, you know. <laughs> oh, I could hear it. I said, what are you doing back there? He said, big fish tried to jump out. I said, man, you better be careful, you know. <laughs> uh, so, but, uh, you know, we like keep our water cool, which up here we didn't have to worry about yeah, that, yeah. you know. This time of year. We were just worried about reeling them up so deep. But it didn't matter. And that's a mentality you got to have, especially when you're bringing them that deep in, in tournament style. I mean, you might be on fish. But at the end of the day, you gotta learn how to take care of them. Well, that and you gotta, I, you know, on our ride back, we didn't have any options. If we hadn't have fished the way we did, we wouldn't have been there probably on the second day. Mm -hmm. So we found these big white crappie, or bigger white crappie, and that's where they were. And we just had to, that's what we had to do. You know, we got lucky. We lost one fish that didn't end up hurting us, but we lost a little weight on the second day. But uh, we were able to just call our way up every day. Um, you know, it worked out. One thing I'll say, being fishing Lake Fork like I do in the wintertime, I fish 40, 50 foot of water all every day. You're, you're and I'm fishing 20 to 30 foot deep. So with live scope, fishing that deep, it's a, there's a trick to it. There's mm -hmm. an art. Well, we're going to hold on to that hard. Okay. I'm going to break Jerry off real quick. And okay. this is going to be part two. Okay. And we're going to go right there. Guys, we're... We're so excited for Jerry. Man, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm going for you to hear. Right he now. is our buddy of ours. Yeah. He he's been a, a fan of ours since the beginning. Yeah, and, I'm and, glad to know you guys. Man. And we can't wait to to part two. So make sure you hit subscribe. Don't miss yeah. part two because he's fishing to dig into his yep. techniques. Yep. On this man makes a living by catching these crappie off yep. the lake for it. Yep. So subscribe. Uh, get ready for Jerry. Jerry, what's your number? Somebody wants to come fishing with you real quick. 214-544-3678. Uh, We're on Facebook, Hancock's Guide Service. You know, I, I don't have a website anymore. Yep. I canceled yep. my website. I never got anything on anymore. It's yep. all Facebook, Facebook. And Instagram, yep. and just word of mouth. So just just call me or find me on Facebook and yep. message me. And, 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 he, and, uh, he'll respond. Yeah, we yeah, talk yeah, all I'll the time. Back with you. All right, check out part two coming up. All right. Holla. Big muddy river, a place I'll always remember. A cabin on the lake and a fishing pole. Forever here, I'll rest my soul. I can be